Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the periodic table and how is it even arranged? So we have all of these tiles, right? But what do all these numbers mean on the side and how can that help us identify atoms looking at Bohr models and the periodic table? So let's start with these numbers on the side. These are going to be called our periods. Our periods go horizontal. So these are also our rows. So what do the rows tell us anyway? Well, our rows tell us how many rings or energy levels each atom has in that row. So everything in row one has how many rings or energy levels? Yeah, so everything has one. So we're gonna draw one circle around the one. So go ahead and get out your periodic table if you don't have it out yet and follow along with me. So on the one, we're gonna draw how many circles? So right here, it has one ring or one circle. Now, everything on row two has how many rings or energy levels? Right, so two. And then what about, then three, how many next? Yep, one, two, three, four, five, one. I'm gonna start drawing them like this so we can still see the periodic table. Okay. All right, so now you can also notice that the size of the rings are larger once you go down the periodic table. If you take a closer look and look at the masses of these elements as well, you'll notice that the mass is also increasing because the atoms are increasing. Now, what about our columns or our groups? We also call those families because they kind of react similarly. So these are our groups, and those actually tell us the numbers at the top. The first number is the group number, so group one. And then the number under that, the A number, tells us the number of valence electrons. Now you may remember when I said valence electrons in another video, I'm pointing to the outside when I say it because Valence electrons are the number of electrons on the outermost ring. Not how many electrons the atom has, but the valence electrons are only the ones on the outermost ring whenever you're looking at the atom in a Bohr model. So if we look at group one, they have, I'm gonna draw a V underneath the A number because group one has one valence electron. All of those elements now group two has two valence electrons. We're gonna go ahead and skip our transition metals and go over to group 13 has how many? Can you see it? 13 only has three, so we just follow along. One, two, three, 14 has four, 15 has five, 16, six, 17, seven, and 18 has eight. Now, 18 has eight valence electrons, which means it's in its happy place. All of these elements, all these atoms want to get to eight. Eight is happy, full, nice, in their happy place. So we're gonna also go ahead and color in this group. And this is gonna be, we're gonna draw a happy face and kind of like a crown because you know a crown is like a king that is good by themselves they want nobody else because they are happy so happy place means that they are stable also could mean like it's non-reactive or least reactive so you can put non-reactive These are also going to be, if you look at what these are, these are all of our noble gases. So that's able to tell us kind of what group 18 is about. Now, what about the rest? Are they reactive too? Well, they don't have eight, so yeah, definitely. But the ones that are closest to eight, the ones that are almost there, that are really reactive, they go really crazy because they are one away are going to be which ones? Right, so we have group 
17 is almost there. And then also, what other group? This one's a little tricky, but group one is also really, really close because they can just get rid of that one and then the next energy level or ring will be full, which means it's stable. So we're gonna also highlight that group. Now, these are highly reactive, so this means even in group one, if you drop them in water, they will probably cause an explosion. So we're gonna draw to make sure we know they're highly reactive. This is my beautiful drawing of fire, in case you didn't know. So I'm gonna just draw a key up here. My fire equals highly reactive. All right. Oh, can y'all see that? Here we go. There we go. Okay, so now when we're looking at the periodic table and we say, well, how many rings does aluminum have? Well, we will look at aluminum and we would see that it has three rings. Well, how many valence electrons does aluminum have? Look at our top number, the A number, three. But what group is it in? 13, very good. Now, let's see what about Hmm, if we're looking at, let's see, chlorine. We're in the same period, so we still have three rings, but how many valence electrons does it have? Very nice. And now you probably also labeled already the metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Well, now we can decide which is our highly reactive metal group. Where are the metals at? Yeah, they're over here. So which group are metals and highly reactive? Group one, yes, very good. All right, well that is about it for groups. Which way do our groups go? Groups, our families, are the columns going up and down. And which way do periods go? Yep, if you say period, then you know they go this way. Periods are the rows going left to right. I hope you learned something new and we'll see you next time.